Some people ask me what I did during my week off, and uh, people said, did you watch movies? Did you read? Did you go out? And um, really, no. Uh, the biggest thing that I did was I cleaned out my garage. And if you had told me a year ago I would get pleasure out of cleaning out my garage, we would all be seeking help together. It was kind of my own rolling away of the stone from the, the, from the tomb because, you know, working in a garage all day and then you open up that garage door that first time and it's the bright sun, man. It was, uh, it was a good moment for me, but uh, it's really weird. My mom would be shocked that that was the highlight of my week was cleaning out my garage. And so the next time she wants me to come to Winston-Salem, I, I think I know what I'll be doing for her. By the way, and also, we are very fortunate to have Natalie with us. Natalie has done a wonderful job in our nursery, and she has been a wonderful help with our children's ministry. And so I just want us to take a moment to thank Natalie, and also, as a congregation, really appreciate that we have her as part of our team, and we are truly blessed. So this morning, I'm going to begin a new sermon series called Victory. And over the series, Pastor Mark and I are going to tell you how Jesus' victory over doubt and lies and deafness, hate, fear, and conflict can and will strengthen you to live a more bold and confident faith. Today we begin with Jesus' victory over doubt. When Jesus removes doubt, he then moves us. Our gospel features my favorite disciple, Thomas. Now Thomas gets a bad reputation because he wasn't present when Jesus appeared before the disciples on that Easter Sunday. Now, we don't know why he wasn't there. My guess is he was hiding. That was what the other disciples were doing. Remember, Mary had told them that Jesus had been risen. He is risen. And Peter and the beloved disciple saw the empty tomb with their own eyes, but they didn't go sharing the good news. Instead, they sit in a locked room because they are scared. They know that if they leave, they could be arrested, abused, and killed just like Jesus. I would argue that all the disciples were filled with doubt, not just Thomas. This is why I think Thomas gets that bad rap. Now, there are a lot of words that we use for doubt, skepticism, suspicion. However, doubt also means to have reservations and uncertainty. And there is a lot of uncertainty in that locked room. And what happens when you doubt? You stop moving. Thomas refuses to move into a resurrection belief unless he sees proof for himself. As our gospel says, the disciples aren't going anywhere, and they will not take the first steps out of that room. So on the first day of the resurrection, there is doubt, there is uncertainty, there is inaction. And that is where and when Jesus comes in. And Jesus provides four gifts to the disciples and to us. Peace, the Holy Spirit, proof, and motivation. In the middle of this room of uncertainty, Jesus appears. If a giant boulder can't keep Jesus in a tomb, a locked door has no chance. And immediately, Jesus provides the disciples peace, but not just any peace, his peace. From John 14, verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. The peace that strengthened Jesus and got Jesus moving is now the same exact peace inside the disciples. So first comes the peace. And then Jesus gives them the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Now, just like you need an engine in order for a car to work, 
the Spirit is the engine for the body. The gift of the Holy Spirit is not only to ease the disciples' fear, but to get them moving, to get them out of the room and get to work. But they still need a little push. And that comes the next week when Jesus gives them and Thomas uh, the, the, what they need to get out. Now notice that the room has stayed locked. You can't come in and you can't go out. The reason I like Thomas is he seems to be the most human of all the disciples. Here is a guy who is super into Jesus. He was ready to die for Jesus. Remember John 11, when Jesus was warned about staying away from Bethany because his life was in danger and to not take care of Lazarus. It was Thomas who said, let's all go and die with Jesus. Now, if I were one of the disciples, I'd say, hey, hold on, let, slow down there, slow down there. But Thomas was certainly compassionate, passionate, and bold. But then Jesus died. And Thomas saw his own passion die with Jesus. And then you have his friends, these disciples, telling him, Jesus is alive. But you also have these same disciples in a locked room. It appears they haven't done anything a single thing to show that Jesus is alive. They have not done anything to help Thomas come to belief. So here comes Jesus again, and Thomas gets what he wanted, visible proof. And the great thing about this exchange is that Thomas, once he sees Jesus, he no longer needs to feel Jesus' wounds. Thomas is moved. He is moved to not only believe, but to profess the strongest profession of faith any of the disciples would say, my Lord and my God. Thomas has his passion restored, and there is no more doubt. There is only determination. Thomas as legend goes, is the one who goes and starts the church in India. India is a very large place. So you go from someone who had doubt, fear, and uncertainty to the most certain faith possible to travel to unknown lands and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus uses this moment to not only get Thomas moving, but all the disciples. This is the final gift that Jesus gives them. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. This is not Jesus making them feel bad about their doubt and their uncertainty. This is Jesus, Jesus making them feel good because Jesus is back. Jesus has won. This is the gift of motivation. And this good news cannot stay in a locked room. The disciples cannot stay in that locked room anymore. They have to get moving. And the only direction they can go is out. Back out into the world. And they have a lot of good news to share. And so do we. You see, the Easter story is not over with Jesus' resurrection. It continues today with us. Right here with me, with you, with you folks, and in this church and in this moment. So let's look at how we can use the same gifts that Jesus gave the disciples and how we can use them today. We live in a world of uncertainty. And when you start to think of all the problems, the pandemic, war, politics, ideologies, false teachers, false prophets, it can make you want to run and find a safe place, lock the door, because no one, nothing bad, can get to you. But that is where the gift of Jesus' peace comes in. Jesus' peace, the same peace that gave Jesus the courage 
to take on Good Friday, to face it. It is the same peace that can give you the courage to face the Good Fridays in your life. When you face physical setbacks, mental setbacks, sickness, and death, the peace of Christ is there with you. And then that is where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Spirit fills you with the spiritual nourishment that you need, the God vitamin, if you will. It gets us moving, and it moves your heart and your mind and your body, just like it did with Thomas as he sets off to India. And then, with that peace and the Holy Spirit guiding your senses, you can start to see the proof that God is alive and in your life. Now, I know I mention a lot about how my family and my friends and this congregation, how they have been examples for me to show that Jesus is alive and present. But these are the best examples in my life to share with you. And I would argue they are the best examples in your life. Think of your loved ones. Think of your family. Think of your friends. Think of the person or persons who reached out to you in your time of need. They called you. They messaged you. They visited you and said, how are you doing? What do you need? Can we help you? We love you. And you are not alone. Over the last two years, we have certainly faced a lot of obstacles, but we have also seen the glory of God come out in so many people in so many different ways. Ministries continue to go. I would say ministries continue to grow because Jesus' victory is better and greater than any kind of obstacle in our way. And so the proof is around us. Open your eyes and more importantly, open your hearts to where Jesus is. It's a way of Jesus saying, you want proof? The proof is already here. This leads us to the gift of motivation. Motivation. I was reading a great story about Scotty Scheffler, who's the 25-year-old man who just won the Masters Golf Tournament, one of the biggest golf tournaments of the year. Now, Scotty is a Christian, and he is a regular attendee at the Bible studies that they have on tour. Now, as he entered that last day of the competition, he had a three-shot lead. But that morning, he started to have serious doubt. He said he woke up Sunday and he cried like a baby because he didn't think he was ready for the moment. But his wife, Meredith, helped him regain his composure. This is what Scotty says. Meredith told me this morning, if you win this golf tournament, if you lose by 10 shots, if you never win another golf tournament again, I'm still going to love you and you're still going to be the same person. When faced with doubt and uncertainty, Scotty received peace. He received the Holy Spirit that got him moving, got him swinging. He received the visible proof in the form of his wife, his loved one. He received the motivation to leave that hotel and get to work and claim his first green jacket. This was God working in his life. And this is God working in our lives today. Here is what victory over doubt means. No matter what happens, God loves you. I believe there's not a moment where God starts to love you. I think God loves you from beginning to end, before you were formed, throughout your life, and when you make that last breath here, and then join God. God always loves you. And that's very important that when we doubt, and we will doubt, God continues to love. God continues to love and provide even when we are uncertain. God always loves. And when you have those moments you want to run to your locked room in times of doubt or anger, whatever locked room you find yourself in, remember, Jesus is there. 
Remember, if a stone could not keep Jesus in a tomb, a locked door will not keep Jesus from you. And Jesus will be there to give you peace, the spirit, proof, and motivation. The front door to our church is not locked this morning. And we are not locked in here. We are not stuck in here. God does not want us to stay here. God wants us to get moving. Because we have a victory story to share. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.